Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, uh, my name is Margo Black, and I am here as a renter, a mother with three kids. I have two cars. Um, my family has two cars anyway. And, and I am coming to speak out against the minimum parking requirements um, because we are in the midst of an unprecedented housing crisis, and I think that anything that increases the cost of housing and restricts the supply is something that should be avoided at all costs. Um, I've heard uh, some compelling arguments that perhaps the increase in um, the development costs is, is uh, not saving the renter any money, and that may be the case right now, but it does create a floor on um, what those rents can be. I mean, it, it certainly does increase the building cost, which you know we can't um, we can't uh, disappear any other way besides passing that on to the renters at some point. Um, I, I really see this parking quagmire as being um, part of our growing pains of going from you know small town to a big city. Um, and really one piece of those growing pains is that we have to cut our addiction to cars. I mean, we, are, we hear over and over and over about um, folks, or the population growth coming into the city, and we're just not going to be able to accommodate all those cars. And just like when people move to New York City and San Francisco, they don't imagine having a car there. I think that that is what we need to envision in Portland. Um, I personally think that, you know, the parking and traffic situation is awful. Um, you know, we can't get anywhere in town anymore in under 40 minutes unless it's, you know, what, two in the morning. So I got a bike. <laughs> My daughter just moved uh, to a building downtown by um, PSU that doesn't have any parking. Um, you know, she got her driver's license the day after she turned 16. I couldn't stop her from getting a car. Uh, she's selling her car, you know. So um, we, are, we are making choices um, that are informed by the fact that parking is expensive and hard to find and traffic is awful. But basically, if we build it, they'll come, right? I mean, I'm not going to move to a building right now that doesn't have parking, um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't buildings that have parking. And so I think that for building buildings that don't have parking, people um, are going to move into that knowledgeable about, that, about those buildings not having parking. It's not like there aren't any choices for them, especially if they're willing to pay those premium rents for those studios in Northwest. So um, I don't think that people are being forced to have cars or being forced to move into buildings with no parking and get on street parking. I think that um, we need to, I, I think building the parking now and repurposing it later is exactly the way to slow our cutting our addiction from cars. And I just want to say, as a renter and a parent with cars, I absolutely am opposed to the minimum parking requirements. Marco, can I ask you something? Um, what if you think about the idea of instead of parking minimums, limiting the number of permits that those new buildings get? I mean, on the one hand, obviously, it's discriminating against new people as opposed to old. But on the other hand, ultimately, I think we are going to have to limit the number of permits, and there's not going to be any perfect way. Would you think it would be acceptable or unacceptably discriminatory to say, for new buildings above a certain size, we won't give every, we will distribute, you know, per, parking permits for that permit area to half the people rather than all of them or something like that. I think that's fine. I think anything we're doing to limit the amount, uh, you know, to prioritize making room for people over cars is a good thing. And if limiting parking permits is a way to do that, that's fine. I do think that, and, and Commissioner Fish brought up the equity lens, I think there are going to be folks who move in. Um, you know, possibly with disabilities or elderly or they, you know, suffer an injury or for whatever reason, you know, they need to have access to a car. And I hope that um, any, any um, limiting of permits like that uh, will have a, a mechanism for folks to obtain those permits when they are truly deemed necessary. Um, but again, I think that, you know, right now we have a lot of choices and one usually does not need to move where there is no parking right now. Margo, so. I have an idea. I just ran it by Joe, and he didn't tell me to leave the building. <laughs> he had your reaction. What if we just said the parking minimums do not apply to affordable housing? And if you're building a unit that, that serves someone at 0 to 60 of medium family income, which is where the greatest need is, we said that, um, and, and you, have, you enter into a regulatory agreement to keep, you know, that doesn't run afoul of, rent control, which we're preempted from doing. Right um, now. Tell, tell we overturn that ban. I think within the current, we have to do what the hand we're dealt today. <laughs> um, what, 
What if we just said uh, on affordable units that parking minimum doesn't apply? So let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. So right now, the minimum parking requirements don't kick in until after 30 units, right? So are you saying that, let's say there are 30 market rate units and 10 affordable units, there would still be no, um, th th those extra 10 wouldn't trigger the required parking spaces? A, I don't have a fish plan on this. B, there's a lot of people who would, would disagree with that approach for a lot of good policy reasons. But since you led with housing affordability, I'm just, I'm just asking you, one, one way we could, we could clearly meet your, your concern is come up with a system that said for affordable units, there is no parking minimum. And I don't know how you, we'd have to figure out how to structure it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pitching my, my amendment on this, but I'm trying to figure out whether, whether there is a way to get at what you led with, which is anything that adds to the cost. I mean, the truth is, lots of things add to the cost of housing, even for affordable housing. We Especially for affordable housing, right? There's a lot of social costs built in. Well, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. we, we want a low-income family to be able to send their kids to a school in Southwest and Outer East and Northeast and not mm -hmm. just have one choice. So mm -hmm. we, pay, we sometimes build on higher cost dirt. But I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get philosophically what, what, what you would think about having a, a, a minimum but not applying it to affordable housing. I mean, uh, in, certainly in principle, I don't um, oppose that at all. I think that's a great idea. I, I worry, though, about um, the cost of market rate housing because that is going to impact everybody who makes 61% and above um, median family income. And I think that anything that is adding to the cost of market rate housing is a, a concern. Um, it's an imperfect solution. But it's, it's imperfect, something sure. To think about. Mm -hmm.